Hello and welcome to another tutorial in monitoring of forest resources. My name is Lutz Fermann and in this video I'm going to explain the basics of relescope sampling or Bitterlich sampling. In order to explain relescope sampling I need to come back to Walter Bitterlich who proposed a revolutionary idea in the 1940s. He proposed a simple technique how we can derive an estimate of the stand basal area by just counting the trees around us. And this was a very revolutionary idea. For those of you who don't know what the stand basal area is, it is the cross-sectional area of all the trees around us per hectare, usually ex expressed in square meters per hectare. Walter Bitterlich also proposed this mirror relescope that we have seen before, but we can also use more simple technologies like this very simple dendrometer here to establish an opening angle. This is the idea of the concept. We use a device to establish an opening angle and we check all the trees around us whether they appear bigger or smaller than this opening angle. Whenever they are bigger or wider than this opening angle, we count these trees and we need to multiply the number of counted trees with the basal area factor that corresponds to the different widths of these counting plates. The opening angle is here defined by a fixed length of this string and a fixed width of these different counting plates here. And we have different counting factors 1, 2 and 4 and we multiply the number of counted trees with this factor to get an estimate of the stand basal area in square meters per hectare. So how to do that? We have this small mark here on our string which is exactly 50 centimeters in distance and you hold this one close to your eye and then you aim over these counting plates. Before you start counting you need to decide which counting factor you are going to use. This corresponds to the plot size that we are establishing here. In this case I have a very good visibility and I will use counting factor number two. I will now start with this tree and I'm aiming at all the trees in 1.3 meters height, so dbh height, and I just check whether they appear bigger or not. And every tree that appears bigger is counted. So this is number one. If you find a tree that is exactly covering the counting plate, you count it as a half tree. I have one of them, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, 8.5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12.5, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. This tree is a special case because you can imagine there might be trees behind this tree that I oversee. So I should carefully check by stepping to the side and check whether there is something behind this. 18, 19, 19.5, 20. And this is where I started. So I now counted 20 trees that appear bigger than my opening angle or exactly as wide as my opening angle. And if I multiply this with the counting factor that I have used, which is 2, I get an estimate of the stand basal area. So in this case 40 square meters per hectare. So this relescope sample or angle count sample is very efficient if we like to estimate the stand basal area. And the reason for that is very simple. The inclusion probability of the trees around us is directly proportional to their cross-sectional area. And that means we are including the trees proportional to our target variable, which is always a very efficient technique. However, relescope sampling or angle count sampling is not very efficient if we like to derive an estimate of the number of trees per hectare. 
Another instrument we can use to establish a Bitterlich plot or conduct angle count sampling is such a small glass prism. It is simply a small piece of glass that has a given fixed angle. And this also determines the counting factor of this piece of glass. Different to the dendrometer that I showed you before, in this case the opening angle is created inside the piece of glass. And that means we hold the prism above our sampling location and walk around the prism. We are now counting all the trees where the original picture of the stem is overlapping the picture that we see in this prism. This prism will shift everything to the left or to the right. And as long as these two pictures are overlapping, we are counting the tree. If they just touch at the edge, it is a half tree. And if these two pictures are not touching at all, the tree is out. Let me check for the first tree. This would be in, out, out, in, in, a half tree, in, in, in. So you are doing essentially exactly the same thing again. You are counting the trees that are in. And by multiplying, multiplying with a fixed counting factor that is determined by the angle of this glass, you get an estimate of the stem basal area. With the information about the stand basal area, we have a lot of information about the forest stand around us. We can apply, for example, a very simple volume function to get a prediction of the stand volume for this single sample point here, for this single position. In our case, we estimated a stand basal area of 40 square meters per hectare. If we multiply this with the dominant height of the trees around us, I have measured a height here of 27 meters, the only remaining thing we need to apply is a form factor. You should know what the form factor is from the lectures. And we can say that an average form factor for the trees we see around us might be 0.5, which is a rough approximation. So if I calculate 40 square meters per hectare times a dominant height of 27 meters times a form factor of 0.5, then I get a prediction of the stand volume of 540 cubic meters per hectare. And this is interesting because we just counted a number of trees. So it is a very fast and very efficient technique to get an estimate of the stand volume. Okay, the Bitterlich plot that we have just installed here in this location is in a flat terrain. So if we are working in slope terrain, we need to apply a slope correction. At least if we use this very simple dendrometer, since this cannot conduct any slope corrections for us. It is different if we use the mirror reloscope because this mirror reloscope is able to make a slope correction automatically. On the back side of this instrument you find a table for slope correction factors which are just a function of the cosine of the inclination angle. In the next tutorial I will show you how you can conduct a reloscope sample or angle count sample without any device using your own sump. So hope to see you in this next tutorial and thank you for watching up to here.